Here I am at the um, Battle of Green Glass uh, in Pilleth uh, on the 22nd of June uh, 2023. It was uh, 621 years ago today, on today's day, 22nd of June in 1402, that the Battle of Green Glass took place. Um, if I have a look there, I'll check out my car parked in front of the sign at the moment. There's the sign, Battle of Green Glass. Um, so there it is, look. Um, uh, to find it on Google Maps, um, if you, uh, you should type in um, St. Mary's Church, Pilleth, and it will take you straight up and basically direct you to this point and, and uh, drive straight up to the top of the road. And there is a place to park your car as well, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but as I said, it was on this date, uh, 22nd June in the year 1402, that uh, Owen Glyndua had... Um, it was one of his greatest victories. Now, what I'll do now is I'll get back in the car, um, drive it to the top here, and I will uh, show you uh, where to park your car, and uh, where, which is right by the church. Uh, the battle itself was on a hill. Uh, the Welsh were on the top. The English were on the bottom. And I'll tell you more about how that battle went in more detail uh, shortly. So here I am now on the top. Um, we look at the sign here, it tells you the history of uh, this site, Battle of Green Glass, and uh, places to park your car, there and there, and uh, there's my car parked in the shade, and uh, if you work your way up, here you know and uh, that there is the uh, church St Mary's Church and there's the hill up there which will be going up which I'll which I'll take you up to shortly and uh, here with me is uh, Gareth Jones secretary of the Owen Lindua Society And today we are fortunate to have a, a walking group from uh, Coventry. We were camped up on top, hidden up on top, and then an English force led by Edmund Mortimer, who was the major landowner. Actually, his nephew was the major landowner, but he was only about 10 years old or something years old. And so the Edmund, the older Edmund, was uh, tasked with bringing a large English force with a number of English lords up the valley and sorting out Lindor because basically the English were trying to get Lindor, or had already been trying to get him for two years. And so they came up the valley. The decision is, is in, we're not sure about the exact facts, but it, it looked as if the order was given to charge up the hill because they spotted a few of the, those Indians up on the top, which was pretty much suicide because, as you can see, the steepness of the hill, especially if it's the 22nd of June, like June and if the weather was like this, then they'd have been struggling, especially with their heavy, heavy armour, etc. So they were getting up the hill, struggling to get up there, they were picked off by Hindu forces. Apparently a lot of the English army was made up of uh, Welsh men from the area. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was the, it was more than the lands. Well, yeah, but it, it was, it was like a Trojan horse effect. Yes, <laughs> thank but, you all for saying that. <laughs> and so they made the decision, probably halfway through the battle, that uh, probably Glindu was going to win. So they changed sides. <laughs> and another force, apparently, which was in the next valley, was then sent in to finish off the English, who are still standing. And. Um, trees there are where apparently the Wellingtonia I think were put in about 200 years ago, possibly after the Battle of Waterloo if I remember rightly, but they discovered this large graves under, underneath and they assumed that a lot of the English force were still there and those those trees are basically a memorial to them now. Well 
Oi, I have now um, ascended up the hill, the very hill that the uh, Battle of Wingglass was on. They're still here. Uh, those trees behind me, the tall trees there, is where some of the um, dead are buried from that battle. And you look at look at how it was with this hill. Right, so the Welsh have been coming from the top of the hill, the English from the bottom. And what had basically happened was, was there were, as well as the Welsh from the top, there were some who had turned to the Welsh side close to the time of the battle and even during the battle. Um, some of which had even infiltrated the English, who then cornered them from both sides. A bit like a Trojan horse effect, really. So it looked like as if they had been uh, firing upon what looked like their own men. Um, which is partially how the Welsh had won the day. And as a result then, um, following that, they had captured uh, Sir Edmund Mortimer, who, um, who had eventually uh, defected to, to Owen Glyndua and had even married his daughter, Catherine which had formed an alliance and Sermon Mortimer even had more right to the English throne than uh, King Henry IV himself. So alliance was then fought, uh, then formed um, between the Mortimers, the Percys of Northumberland and Owain Glyndua. And the goal was, was for this alliance to defeat Henry IV, in which Glyndua would have had all of Wales and a small part of England as far as Worcestershire. The Percys would have had North England and the Mortars would have had South England. Which meant in the past 600 years we would have had a slightly bigger Wales and two small Englands, North and South. Now, I'm going to attempt, after taking a break here in the shade, halfway up, I'm now going to attempt to go up there where the wall should come from. Here I am now on the very top of the hill. Look at the downwards. And you see the, the big bunch of trees behind me, right there. Uh, as I said, that's where some of the dead from this battle were buried at. And look, I've even brought my uh, mug to celebrate the occasion, Rattle of Glass, victory for Glyndua. And you think, going up uh, this uh, hill here, imagine doing that 621 years ago today, carrying battle armour and shields and other uh, heavy equipment. It'd be a lot hotter than it was for me walking up here just now and simply this. It's a nice view from up here, as you can see, and I think this is where the Battle of Inglass was 621 years ago today. And now I'm going to sing our national anthem. Sant I Gwai Lad 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 Yon Oi Vim Glad Ramo Avi Ebir Hofai O Pathet Ir Hen Yaif Yakiza. Now, I 
I'm walking down the very battlefield where the very field where this battle took place uh, 621 years ago today. Imagine them all, the Welsh running from up there, the English charging from down there. We Welsh had the higher ground. And as I said, it was 621 years ago today that they charged down this very, this very battlefield, which I'm simply walking down right now with my flag. And uh, finally, I'll show you the church when I get to the bottom. See you in a moment. Great view, isn't it? Right, I'm back at the church now. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to go in the church. So I'll show you now the inside of the church. This church, from what I understand, was around at uh, the time of Glyndua. And we're now going to venture inside. Right, let's go inside the church now. Ooh, a lot cooler in here. It's definitely not cooler in here. So this is the church. And uh, here's a little exhibition of uh, the battle that was on the uh, battlefield. Cheers. Right, um, now I'm going to take you upstairs, up this, uh, up to the tower. Right, we're at the top of the tower now. Um, it is dark in here, uh, unfortunately, so I'm not sure if we can see much. Um, here's my mug. Um, but I've got the torch on, so we might just be able to just see how it looks from up here. Um, but in case I can't, I will obviously uh, show you from a photo uh, momentarily how the whole room looks. Uh, but this is roughly how it looks. Um, so even though it's more daylight inside, it's clearly not bright enough, even with my torch on, um, to see how it looks. But as I said, I will show you a photo in a moment uh, of myself in here, um, which will give you a rough idea of how it looks up here. But um, there's the stairs. So this is at the um, this is at the top of the of the tower. Where the bell is um, rang. Um, there it is. Well, if you can just see the bell. Um, don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. Um, that's the bell. I'll get a photo of that in a minute um, to show you all. And then I have like this. Finally, I thought I'd take you around the back of this uh, magnificent church, in which there is a well, which I will show you now. There is the well, right there. There's the well. 
Vamos de barco. And over here we have two different plaques. One which is basically like a like a sort of map of the area of the battlefield mainly. That I'll show you now. There it is. Don't know if you can see that. And finally, the plaque that also commemorates the battle that took place here on today's date in the year 1402. There it is there. You can see that. And that concludes the concludes my um, video documentary of the um, site of the Battle of Pringlas, which, as I said, was a key victory for Oin Glyndua, which ended with the capture of uh, Sir Edmund Mortimer, who, at um, six months later. Or within six months, had defected to uh, Owen Glyndua and who had then even married Owen Glyndua's daughter, Catherine, whose um, statue, the statue of Catherine Glyndua, um, is in London at, um, at the churchyard. The church itself's not there anymore. So the church uh, was sadly destroyed. Um, during the Great Fire of London, but its um, garden, however, is still there, and um, there is a statue of Catherine Glendua there, which I'll show you a photograph in a moment, um, which is opposite uh, Cannon Street in, Lon uh, in London, Cannon Street Station, because um, what had happened was, was uh, when the English um, Eventually, we took Harlot Castle, which for four years had been no one to as well court. Um, what had then happened was Glyndua and one of his sons had uh, his son had escaped, um, but uh, Catherine and her mother Glyndua's wife Margaret and many others were um, they were they were uh, firstly imprisoned. Uh, in Harlot Castle when the English had took it back but then they were taken to the Tower of London um, where they eventually died and Catherine uh, was then buried at the place where her monument is now um, and I did visit that uh, monument a few months ago in London and I, as I said I will um, show you a photo of that monument which should appear on your screen in a moment. Um, and yes, that uh, concludes our uh, that concludes my uh, documentary of this place. And um, on the anniversary of the uh, Battle of Green Glass. Um, and if you want to see more videos, uh, historical videos like this. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, that is. Um, please press the subscribe button on my YouTube channel. Um, any of my friends who are watching this on Facebook, feel free to share it around. It's just great to get the. It's just important to get the Welsh history out there. Um, and uh, if any of you are around on uh, Owen Glyndwr Day, which is uh, the 60th of September this year, this is 2023, which happens to fall on a Saturday, we have got the. Um, the Owen Glyndua Parade in Corwen, uh, with the church service beforehand, um, time yet to be confirmed, but it's usually around, I think it's 10.30, 10 o'clock, with the, uh, the church service that is, with the parade uh, about 11, I think it is. Um, but all the info of that will be on the Owen Glyndua Society website, 
and the other one as usual is um, in the eve on the same day in the evening in Harlech again Saturday 16 September um, usually starts at 7 30 at uh, Slight Rock and then ends um, outside uh, Harlech Castle led by uh, the Ardidbury Knights who are a, um, a reenactment group um, and now I am going to get into my car and as you can see I've put flags on it as well and I'm now going to get in my car and head straight back to Newport. Oi Val, bye for now. And Jochen Val.